Hey guys, and welcome back to a new video. An Android application is made up of four critical building elements. One of those elements, as we have seen before, is an activity. And it is what we're going to talk about in this video. We have also seen that the Android manifest file must include a definition of those elements. And as you can see here on the screen, we are using an activity, so we have to define that activity within our manifest file. Activities are referred to as our app display layer, as activities set and modify the layout, display the output, and react to user inputs. And as a real life example of an activity, you could have an activity for the login screen, another one for the register screen, and one for a list of chat messages. We also know that the activity is the main entry point of our application. And if you have multiple activities, we have to define only one activity as the main entry point. So whenever we run our app, the act, that activity becomes visible first. Now, every and each activity has its own life cycle. The life cycle of an activity is represented by a set of functions or the so-called callbacks that the system invokes automatically. Those callbacks start with the onCreate. On the creation of an activity, the system will first invoke the onCreate. It's worth mentioning that this callback is called once during the lifetime of the activity. So usually it's your preferred place to execute your object's initialization logic. After the onCreate is invoked, the onStart is called, and in this callback, the activity becomes visible on the screen. Then follows the onResume. On the onResume function, in this state, the activity is visible and interactive with the user. The activity stays in the onResume state as long as it is in the foreground. And when something interrupts the activity, like a dialogue for example, then, then the activity moves to the post state by calling the onPose callback, which prepares the activity to be in the background. Now, when the activity is in the host state, the system has three options. If you navigate back to the activity, the system once again calls the onResume and stays there. The second option is when another app with higher priority needs more memory. Then the Android system will eventually kill your app, providing that enough memory for that particular app. And when that happens, and you try to navigate back to the activity, the life cycle will start from the beginning of the onCreate state. If neither of those situations occurred, then the onStop gets called, and here the activity has fully moved to the background, and it's no longer visible on the screen. It's also possible that when you are on the onStop state, that other apps need more memory or need more memory, and again the state is moved to the onCreate state. After onStop, when the app is in the background, you would potentially open your app from the launcher or from the overview screen. In this case, the app is brought back to the foreground during and during the process of opening an idle activity, on restart, then on start are invoked, bringing your activity back to the foreground. Finally, when the activity is no longer needed due to multiple reasons like cleaning your activity from or cleaning your activity from the overview screen, or the system eventually kills your app, the on destroy is called and the activity is fully destroyed. So why is it so important to learn about the life cycle of an activity or at least be familiar with the life cycle of that activity? Well, there are a couple of reasons for this. Say for example, you are initializing heavy objects that may affect the performance of the device and you only want to initialize these objects once during the lifetime of the activity. For this, you would override the onCreate and do your initialization logic there. That should happen only once during the lifecycle of the activity. Like for example, connecting to a web server. So whenever you connect to a web server, you don't want to reconnect to that web server as the connection has already been established. And for another example, we know that the app stays on the resume state as long as it is on the foreground. So say that you are initializing a heavy 3D animation that utilizes an extensive amount of memory of the system, which may affect the battery life of the device. 
and you don't want these objects to keep or these objects to keep on using this amount of memory when your app or when your activity is no longer visible on the screen then you should initialize them on the resume state and free up the objects on the on pause state now let's learn how we can override these callbacks first thing is to make sure that you are within the activity so between those braces and press Ctrl O. Then a big list of the possible functions that we can override will appear. We only care about the functions that we have discussed. So I'm going to type on start. Let's start with the on start and it must be somewhere here within the list. Well, here's on start. We click OK and it's overridden. The other way to override a function is to type the function's name. So we have the on create, we also have uh, the on start, let's have the on resume, then the on pause, on start, pause, on, then on stop, and finally the on destroy. I'm going to override also the on restart. Now within every callback, I'm going to make a toast. And if you don't know what a toast is, it's just similar to a dialog. It just pops up on the screen to notify the user about certain actions and events. So the way to make a toast is by calling the make toast function from the toast class. So we just type the function's name or the class's name, then the make toast, and here it receives three parameters: context, text, and duration. Now for the context, we will have a separate video about the context. For now, all you need to know is where this should this toast appear, or I'm going to say that this toast should appear within the activity, or this toast should come from the activity. So the way to refer to the activity is by using this. Then we type the message. So I'm going to just type the callback name, which is on create in this case. Finally, the duration. Well, for the duration, we have two possible durations, short and long. And in this case, I'm, gonna, I'm going to choose short. Now, once you're done creating your toast, you have to call the show function to show your toast. I'm going to copy this over to other callbacks as well. Now, let's try to run our app. So when the app first starts, it calls the on create, and then on start, and finally on resume, and it stays there. Now let's go back to the background. On pause is called, on stop, let's get back to the activity from the overview screen, on restart, on start, and on resume. Let's try to des destroy the activity. On pause, on stop, then on destroy. Getting to know the activity lifecycle is critical for you as an Android developer. So you have the knowledge where you should put your code and where you shouldn't put it, and how you could avoid possible bugs and errors that may happen during the lifecycle. Makes you a lifecycle master who harnesses the activity completely. At the end, I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, don't forget to give me a like and subscribe if you didn't already. Take care and I hope to see you in the next one.